This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live once again. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Happy Tuesday, January 5th, wherever and however you're connected. Great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with the guy who can absolutely appreciate an abstract tweet, Jerem Jordan. We had a couple yesterday, so let's walk through them. Uh, Last night at 9.09 p.m., Mark Pope. It's go time. Get ready, Cougar Nation. We got a game. Okay. Okay. Uh, Still waiting on that one, although we do have a report. We'll get to that in a moment. And uh, at Coach Mateos, it's Eric Mateos, who isn't going to Baylor like we thought might happen. Ryan Pugh is from Troy. Uh, He tweeted, uh, also, go Cougs. And it's the show goes on from Wolf of Wall Street, which Uh this audience isn't uh, that particular (laughs) movie. Uh, But, yeah, Eric Mateos part of a, a release that he'll stay as well. We'll get to that in a moment. But, yeah, two uh, vague-ish tweets, but not vague-ish, vague-ish Ish. Uh, mm-hmm. tweets last night. Yeah. T- I, tis the season. I follow Eric Mateo staying. Some other BYU coaches in prominent roles also staying and being promoted. Here's your Tuesday show lineup. Yes, BYU basketball finds a game in lieu of three straight postponements, but against what team, when, and where? As I just mentioned, BYU football promotes from within to land their new offensive coordinator. His job, figure out how to be awesome even with Zach Wilson leaving for the NFL. No small task. Our Top 5 Tuesday features the best Zach Wilson plays in his BYU career. And we'll speak with Zach's best buddy, Dax Milne, as he too prepares to make the jump for a National Football League career. Here are today's headlines. Aaron Roderick is named... The offensive coordinator. Shocking. Like we said, uh, they promote the quarterback coach and passing game coordinator to offensive coordinator. They also promote Festitake to passing game coordinator. Love it. We talked about this yesterday. This is what happened. Those two will continue to coach the quarterbacks and receivers respectively. We'll comment on this further in a moment. Yes, some more from BYU men's basketball. Yeah, another postponement. Pacific will not play in Pro Bowl on Thursday. Third straight due to issues all with the BYU opponents, mind you. But the Cougars have an alternative, as Mark Pope again tweeted last night. We got a game. Vanquish the foe, listen to this, is reporting that BYU will play at Gonzaga this Thursday. I repeat, BYU reportedly will play at Gonzaga on Thursday. Okay, moving it up. Here we go. Win or lose. You know what? It's going to help BYU's tournament resume. By the way, BYU, the third team out, according to Joe Lenardi's, Fresh ESPN bracketology this morning. Okay, much more coming up on that as well. Men's volleyball is number one in the ABCA preseason coaches poll. Cougars were number one to end the season in March when COVID hit. BYU BYU returns everyone that played a significant role last year. Still waiting the release of the schedule. Also, women's volleyball team held its first practice of the unique rescheduled winter season yesterday. Oh, yeah, that's about to happen, too. BYU women's basketball rallies late but ultimately loses at San Diego. 58-56, first conference loss for the women. BYU sophomore star Shaylee Gonzalez led the team with 21 points, 8 rebounds, 5 assists, or 5 steals, rather. The Cougars will try and rebound at LMU Thursday in Los Angeles. Saturday's game at Pepperdine has been postponed due to COVID-related concerns. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? Yeah. All rise and shout. We need the energy. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. We got a game. Pacific at BYU not happening. That announced officially yesterday, but as we have discussed already, fret not about a third straight opponent with COVID issues because BYU, according to Vanquish the Foe, is going to play top-ranked Gonzaga on Thursday. Jerem, do you... Like the idea of moving up a game against the best team in all the land to this Thursday? Yeah, because BYU needs to play. And uh, right now they're out uh, in Lenardi and Net. and I mean, in the mix, which is good. But like you pointed out, listen, net, BYU's net ranking is going to take a nice bump after this. BYU's going to be uh, hopefully like mid to low 40s after this, if not better. So, uh, yeah, I, I love it. I love it. And here's the thing. We, we haven't had clarification on this quite yet. BYU and Gonzaga could potentially play three games, is is what we're told. Yes. So, uh, 
we'll see. We'll see what this means uh, for the other two games or other one game. We'll see. But I love it. And listen, BYU didn't find out today about this. They knew yesterday. In fact, at practice yesterday, BYU was working on Gonzaga. So it's going to be three days of prep leading up to Thursday, which is as much as you could ask for in a season. So this is good. Listen, Gonzaga's really good, and Gonzaga's probably going to win this game. But uh, can BYU battle them? Can BYU put up a good fight? Can BYU make it interesting at the end and perhaps pull off a big upset? That's what we're excited to see. And it's going to help BYU's resume. It's going to help that BYU's playing a game because right now, what, you know what the WCC is not doing? It's not helping BYU out with, obviously, cancellations that, uh, or sorry, postponements that uh, are out of the league's control. But, like, BYU's been attempting to reschedule games unsuccessfully until this report of at Gonzaga. So I'm excited that BYU is going to get a game. And we'll discuss later. Should the league have bubbled in Vegas? I think it's an interesting thought. This isn't a football scenario. BYU knows who Gonzaga is, what they do, what they're about, and they're the best college basketball team in America. It's not on the East Coast either. Exactly. Where's the equipment truck? There's no equipment truck. You can get on a plane, take your bags, go play basketball. You only have what, 20 people traveling instead of 120? So it's a little bit easier to do this last minute than it is for football. And is the last minute two full days. Exactly. About, it's, it's, yeah. So I'm not buying into the, oh, man, is BYU going to be ready? Yes. As Three ready, days of prep. As ready as BYU can be for Gonzaga, yeah. like it, it, it would be the same. This game has just been escalated or fast-forwarded into, and I'm fine with it. You and I sat here yesterday and talked about it's going to be okay for BYU, or at least my reasoning was I, I'm not that concerned about the postponements yet because BYU still has Gonzaga on the schedule yeah. and St. Mary's. And, and you said, well, w- assuming they can play those games, right? They, they're going to play a game. And hopefully they do. They're going to play a game. It, it's, hold on. It's Tuesday. Let's get to <laughs> Thursday, right? In, in this league right now, it's crazy. Granted, it's not a California school that's had issues. Granted, San Francisco's played in both league games. Gonzaga had its own COVID issues. BYU's been fortunate not to. We hope no one does, right? But uh, this is exciting. Well, and you wonder how many COVID issues have arisen within BYU's program because the athletic department of BYU has chosen largely not to divulge that. So we don't know. Well, there's a point where you have to, and th- all the other institutions are private in the league, so they abide by kind of the, a similar situation. Right now, based on Mark Pope's tweet, we can assume that BYU is healthy and ready to go. So, yeah, speed it up. I'm not play worried about BYU. BYU BYU's needs not to been play the issues the last right. three games. Gonzaga, hey, it, we can assume that they're healthy because they're saying, yeah, let's play. Have on you Thursday. seen them play? They're looking very healthy. Let's play right now. On Thursday, this, BYU needs this game. Win or lose for yes. the resume. Yes. So, the closer we get to guaranteeing this game happening, I am all for it. Just go and see what happens. You lose by 20, whatever. Iowa lost by 20, and they're the third-ranked team in the country. Yes, they have like five or six wins against the top 20. Like Gonzaga's boat racing everyone. Literally everyone. The only game that I wish they would have played that they hadn't was Baylor. It would have been 1v2 in in Indianapolis, the site of the Final Four this year. Well, the whole tournament is in Indiana. So, yeah, this this is great. Uh, BYU not playing is a real detriment because there's no way BYU can climb in if they're not playing, they got to be able to play. And what I don't want is for BYU to play like 10 league games instead of 16. And then the committee's going, well, fewer games. And they, yes, they beat San Diego State. And yes, they beat Boise State. Hopefully it's good. And it's like a close loss, whatever, a beneficial loss in some way. I, right now, I don't understand why BYU is so low in some things. Like, I think, I think it's kind of They're all over weird. the map. And, and some of these things are just metric-based, so it makes sense. Like, we talked about Ken Palm, but it's like, Offensive efficiency is how many points you score per 100 possessions. Defense, how many you allow. That difference or ratio is the number, and that's the Ken Palm number. So it's not like Ken's like, eh, BYU stinks. It almost feels like the USC loss, because it was so bad, is really impacting BYU's Ken Palm rating. Fewer points per 100 possessions in that way. Yeah, That one was really bad, but it's an outlier. BYU's not as efficient as they were last year. Hard to be that. Yet... BYU's 9-2, and two, uh, you know, root for Utah State and St. John's and, frankly, Boise State is what root for every team in basketball. It's different. But this is great. I, I hope that BYU plays Gonzaga thrice and that two are in Spokane because they're quad one games every game. Yes. Um, so I guess more at home would actually be fine, too. But it's Gonzaga. They rule the league. BYU's not in a position of power to be like, no, 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 you're coming here twice. No, no, no. 
Mark Pope has said, and trust me, uh, Buing has tried to play notable non-conference games in the midst of these cancellations, Mm -hmm. and these teams aren't wanting to play for whatever reason. Opponents aren't biting. Whether it's the league saying you can't or not, I don't know all the reasons, but you don't think Mark Pope has been trying to play Kentucky since the day he was hired? You know what I mean? And Duke and Stanford and all these teams. He wants to play the toughest schedule possible. And the tougher, the better. We've talked about the difference in (laughs) scheduling between hoops and football. Football, it doesn't necessarily benefit you, like a team like BYU, to play a crazy schedule. But at basketball, it does because there is actual, I don't know, criteria set up for how it functions with the people making the decisions. And this year has been a joke in football. But in basketball, we get how it works. And BYU is adding... As good a game as they could possibly add this week. The number one team in the country on the road. It's kind of funny because, in a way, we dismiss it a little bit because, oh, it's a conference game. Yes, we look at it like Boise State and football. Oh, Gonzaga Eh. already. We can beat them. That's cool. It's it's, the number one team. Can you imagine if BYU football scheduled Alabama on the road? That's the equivalent here. Yes, it is. got Bama. Oh, but they're in our conference. Remember how we got excited about Coastal Carolina? Imagine Alabama! (laughs) That'd be crazy, right? Yes. Gonzaga is real, and it's going to (laughs) help BYU. Very good good test. I know God's real. Very real. real. This game's happening on Thursday. We think, we hope, and it's going (laughs) to help BYU win or lose. I'm all for it. Yeah. Okay. Still waiting for uh, confirmation from Brigham. What's your reaction to Aaron Roderick as the new offensive coordinator? I love it. And all I need to know is is how Zach Wilson specifically talked about Aaron Roderick in Zach's goodbye letter from BYU football. The compliments, the mention of late-night discussions, of allowing the quarterback to reach out to him at all hours of the day and night to talk strategy. And Zach's told us this before. So when I read it, it wasn't something new. But for fans that aren't aware of their relationship, A-Rod and Zach – are very, very close. And Aaron is close with all of the quarterbacks, and he's very close with Fessy, and Fessy is probably the number one player's coach. You talk to any BYU player, they'll tell you how much they love Fessy Fessy Satake. Fessy is so cool. I'm sorry. I love Fessy. Like, he is so awesome. Um, And Aaron, Aaron is this former... Kind of smaller but effective receiver at BYU has been an amazing, brilliant mind. Obviously, for a long time at Utah, wasn't given like a fair shake to be the guy at Utah. He's been in the game forever. Sark hires him, yeah, and he was at uh, Southern Utah with Kalani Sataki, right? By the way, and Steve Clark and those guys. Steve Sarkeesian hires Aaron Roderick to be the OC at Washington, and then Aaron says, "Actually, on second thought, I'm going to stay at Utah." Changed his mind, got some flack for that. Whatever. I love A-Rod, too. Like, what those guys did under the direction of Jeff Grimes as the OC with Steve Clark and company was incredible this year. Like, you look at what Zach Wilson did, you just look at Zach Wilson. You need to look, like you said, at the coaching staff and what they did. So this is super obvious, this hire. And what it means that they pulled the trigger yesterday on the same day that Jeff Grimes was oh, baby. left, which means they knew about Jeff for several days, if not a week or two, and that they went through this process already because – Aaron Roderick was an obvious choice, but you still have to just interview and make sure, sure you're good and how much are we going to pay you and do you agree to that and that whole th- stuff. Like hiring at BYU takes longer than like yeah. anywhere else. It just takes a minute. So I, they've known for a minute. That's what that means. Sure. And it's a great choice. Aaron Roderick, uh, worst kept secret in BYU football, uh, he has been the primary play caller with tons of input from everybody else, including Jeff Grimes most notably. And Fessy. Since Boise State. Last year, BYU made a change. Uh, Jeff Jeff jumped back in for a game or two here or there, but it's been A-Rod's show with that group for a year and a half. I'm reminded of a conversation I had with A-Rod right after the Navy game to open up the season. And he said, and I paraphrase, it's pretty great, right? It's been three years in the making. Yeah. This allows continuity for the yes. offensive vision to continue on. So now it's not flipping the page to something entirely new. It's just... Hey, let's. It's the same play on, caller. It's the same play calls, the same ideals, offense, familiarity, continuity. It, it makes one yeah. million percent yeah. sense. I, I cannot tell me a better option. 
Honestly. And we'll discuss BYU, later, like, not. They're in the announcement, it talked about the offensive staff and the defensive staff. BYU has an assist coach opening now. Which side of the ball do they yeah. uh, do it on? We'll talk about that later. All right, our question of the day. We move back to basketball. Do you, BYU Sports Nation, like the idea of moving a Gonzaga game up this early in the season for BYU basketball? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation. On BYU Sports Nation. At G Hanson 25 answers on Twitter. Says simply, sure, better than not playing for two weeks. Hashtag BYUSN. There is some of that feeling. There's there's a little bit of desperation. It's like, just a game. Just oh, let's go. Play a game. Got to gotta play. Got to be relevant. Let's now you go. got the number one team in America. So Excited. How about that? Okay, coming up, the latest on Boise State and the ex spouse Mountain West. Plus, our two-on-one with BYU wide receiver Dax Milne. Why he's ready right now to make the jump to the NFL instead of coming back to BYU for one more year. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Join us tonight for BYU Basketball with Mark Pope as the coach and Greg Bell discuss the reported Gonzaga game. Caleb Lohner joins the program. Deep Blue profiles assist coach Nick Robinson's basketball journey around the world. 8.30 Eastern tonight on the BYU TV app. We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day BYU sports play-by-play. I am Spencer Linton. That is Jerem Jordan. Earlier this morning, we had a chance to speak on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline with BYU wide receiver Dax Milne as he prepares for the NFL draft. Why was now the time? Well, he's about to answer that question. Here is our conversation. Dax, let's start with this. Why was now the right time for you to make the jump in pursuit of your NFL dream? Well, obviously it's a bittersweet thing and there's some controversy and whether or not I made the right decision, but overall I've had great support from it. And I just thought, you know, what was the best thing for me and my family? And I just, I just wanted to ride this momentum of the great season that we had um, just right into right in the NFL. Um, I feel like this will be my, my best shot to do it. The only controversy I see is whether you spend a lot of time or no time on your hair. Can you clarify? <laughs> That's for the audience to think about and find out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's talk about this. So you, you have 285 receiving yards last year. Uh, there were three seniors. There was Matt Bushman. Those guys graduate. Matt Bushman gets hurt preseason. All of a sudden, you and Gunnar Romney explode, and in particular, you. You go from 285 to 1188. How did that happen? Uh, man, just a lot of, a lot of things had to go right. Um, Zach, uh, being the great quarterback he is, you know, the O-line giving him time. Um, but, yeah, like you said, I think just the biggest difference is those, those seniors leaving. Um, they were great. They taught me and Gunner a lot, but with them leaving, it just gave um, us more of an opportunity to just go out there and make plays. Um, I think we we've always had the confidence in ourselves that we could go out there and do that. We just uh, needed the opportunities to do so, and I think we we capitalized. BYU wide receiver Dax Millen with the Sun BYU Sports Nation. Dax, at what point did a jump to the NFL first start to take hold in your mind? Um, yeah, good question. It, it was pretty unexpected this season, uh, just cause it happened so fast. I remember one practice about halfway through the season, um, our running backs coach, Harvey Unga, he, he like pulled me aside and was like, so have you started to think about the NFL stuff? And I'm like, ah, uh, not really. And he's like, well, I've just, just let you know, I've had, multiple scouts ask about you and and I've talked to a lot of people and that's kind of when it hit me like wow this is this is an actual possibility if, if I just keep doing my thing and and uh, work hard so yeah was that weird for you because you've gone from obviously the uh you know talked about hey walk on to you have a couple one-handed catches and you're sure handed last year but you're like the fifth or sixth guy to whoa whoa whoa, whoa. we're like six games into this and now we're talking about the NFL yeah, it's super, super weird, but obviously just super grateful for the opportunity and the way that the everything shook down. So, 
Dax, what was the toughest part about making this decision to forego another season at BYU? Man, it really was a tough decision. I'd say the toughest part was just thinking about, you know, all the relationships I have with, with the guys on the team and, and the coaches um, like Fessy and, and Kalani and A-Rod, just all the offensive coaches, just everyone's great. And it's just hard to leave a comfort zone um, like that where everything's just been so fun. Um, BYU's been great. So that's what really made it difficult. But I just, I think this is my best, my best uh, shot I'm going to get. So I'm going to take it. And it makes sense, Dax. It really does. Like you, there was a first round quarterback and a first team All American left tackle, and and an offense that was spectacular, and and a schedule that you guys took advantage of after it blew up, right? And uh, it was a special season, so it makes total sense. So what kind of feedback are you getting relative to the opportunity of the NFL? Obviously, draft pick would be nice, but. If that didn't happen, there's still a lot of BYU Cougars in the NFL having success in spite of that. Yeah, um, if if it doesn't happen within the official draft, I'm I'm pretty confident that I'll at least get uh, someone to sign me and give me a shot in in that way. But yeah, the overall support has been great. Everyone's been super nice and and reaching out and, and telling me that um, that they hope the best and and hope I do make it and everything. So I'm just super grateful for everyone in uh, Cougar Nation. Did you get feedback that said you could be a draft pick, or was this the iron will never be hotter than this, I might as well go now situation, or perhaps a combination? A combination. I've I've been told as high as as, as fourth round that that'd be like, that's my goal is to be – Drafted in the fourth round, and so I've heard four, four to seven, or or even undrafted. So, all right, Dax. When you think about the buildup to the draft, obviously there are a lot of things that have to happen: preparation, training. Uh, you're probably going to move somewhere different, and then you hope to get an invite to the combine. What are what are the next few days, the next few months like for you as far as the timeline goes? Yeah. So the starting today i'm gonna fly out to irvine california and just and that's where i'll be putting my head down and and grinding for the next few months until uh pro day um just get my my body and head right honestly um a lot of work has to be done between now and and then and and as well as the combine if i'm fortunate enough to get an invite to that or if it even happens due to covid and whatnot so yeah, a lot of work needs to be done, and I'm just excited to get to it. Wait, so you're not going to drive 10 hours each way <laughs> back and forth multiple times? My name is not Zach Wilson. <laughs> I don't do that every weekend. I don't. John Beck is a great guy, but I don't need him personally. Um, <laughs> hey, that's me with Dennis Pitta, but anyway. Yeah, yeah take, us, take us back to uh, three years ago, Dax. So you're coming out of Bingham. You probably feel like you've been undersold uh, quite a bit. You end up walking on at BYU. You take a chance. You could have taken a scholarship somewhere else, right? And here you are declaring for the NFL draft coming off a 1,000-yard season. Like, what has this experience been like you to go from you knew you were good, but maybe others around you didn't quite see it in the same way to where you are now? Yeah, uh, to be honest, I wouldn't want to have it any other way. I, I enjoy being the underdog. I enjoy um, being sort of overlooked. Uh, proving people wrong is is something I love to do. And um, you're right; I couldn't have done, I couldn't have done that if I didn't believe myself. And and uh, and even if I, my family didn't believe in me, I, I don't think I would have done it. So I, I owe a lot to them. I thank them for being someone to lean on um, during those tough decisions in the past and, and even now. So, um, like I said. Uh, being the underdog is is something that uh, I really hang my hat on, and I'll continue to have that attitude going into this next chapter of my life. Which current and or former BYU football players are you looking to for advice on how to get ready for the NFL draft appropriately? Besides John Beck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, to be honest, I haven't really talked to any uh, former former BYU people. But I'm sure I will here in the near future. But um, so far, I've just talked to 
um, just NFL people like scouts and, and agents and, and a couple other college players that have declared. So, but I'll, I'll probably get in touch with, with some, some BYU people. Dax, a lot of movement yesterday, obviously, with the BYU coaching staff. Jeff Grimes goes to Baylor as the offensive coordinator. Aaron Roderick is promoted to offensive coordinator officially, although he's been in, involved heavily in play calling, of course. Vesitake, uh, your guy, uh, upgraded to passing game coordinator. What, you, what was your reaction to all that movement? I thought it was – I thought that was going to happen for sure in my head, and I'm glad it did. Um, makes perfect sense. Grimes is great. He was a great leader for, for our offense. Um, he's, he's a a great coach and I respect him a lot. And I think he'll, he'll do great over there in Texas, but, um, having a rod and Fessy promoted into the positions they are now, it just, it makes perfect sense. And, and I'm, and I'm happy for him and I'm happy for the guys that get a, get a play for him in, in these next couple of years. It's, that'll be good. What do you expect from the guys that remain at BYU, notably the quarterbacks, Baylor Romney, Jaron Hall, Sojay Maiava, Jacob Conover, and the receivers like Gunnar Romney, Neil Powell, and company? Yeah, I expect big things from from my boys. Uh, at the quarterback spot, I'm sure you guys are going to have plenty of shows <laughs> debating who the, <laughs> who, who, the, who the guy is coming up. But, hey, I'm telling you, I've, I've been impressed by each and every one of them. They've, they've shown things that just make me stand back and just, you know, be like, wow, that, that was amazing. And, and, and you guys have seen Gunner and, and Neil make plays. I know they're just going to continue to, to get better and, and carry, um, carry these, uh, younger guys up into the, into the starting positions and, and, and make sure that they can compete and com- and make plays for the team. So I'm excited for all of them. Dax, you've been my guy for a while now, so I'm not about to leave you hanging without some BYU Sports Nation karma as you prepare for uh, your NFL dream, man. So take a full, full entourage of karma and do your thing. A dosage. <laughs> He's taking it in. Thank you, guys. <laughs> you got it, man. Good luck to hey, you. You guys have been great, man. I just appreciate all the all the love you guys have shown. Um, your show is great. I love, I love being with y'all. So just appreciate you. You got it, Dax. Congratulations, man. We'll talk to you again soon. All right. Longer underappreciated Dax Milne on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how. That happened a minute ago. Like, I don't know, game five. <laughs> <laughs> I think when he caught the opening, uh, you know. Pass against pass Houston. Pass against Houston. It was like, this guy's incredible. Like, he and Gunnar Romney were both having great years. Gunnar gets hurt, otherwise he's probably like a thousand yard guy as well. BYU very well could have had two one thousand yard receivers. Okay, let's let's talk about something real quick. So the cost of greatness is high sometimes. To get Zach Wilson, what did BYU have to do? They had to fire Ty Demmer. They didn't know it at the time, but firing Ty it made it so BYU didn't need Zadik Dinkelman, his nephew, who was the commit, former LSU guy, and got Zach Wilson. What did it take for Dax Milne to be great? Bessie Satake. It took Matt Bushman getting hurt. Ah, okay. I see where you're going with that. Do you see what I mean? Like, oh, man, that stunk. Like, firing Ty Detmer. Oh, gosh. That's uncomfortable. We all love Ty. Well, yeah, and uh, sorry, along the lines of that, Ben Cahoon gets fired, and in comes Fessy Satake. Jeff Grimes and Fessy Satake are the reason that Dax Milne doesn't go to Weber State. Right. Having him here and having Jeff Grimes here and A-Rod and Fessy here – Get Zach here and Dax here, right? So, the co- again, the cost of greatness is high. Sometimes you have to do something that's pretty uncomfortable, but later you, the return on investment is really high. But in the moment, it's hard. So just keep that in mind, that sometimes you have to make a hard decision like that. To And Matt Bushman's is different. That just like happens. But it, just keep that in mind. Life principle. Then. And sometimes yeah. you have to let the birds just fly, Jerem, even if it means they're leaving BYU a year early, right? I'm fine with it. Because he's actually going to go to the NFL. <laughs> Coming up, should the WCC have bubbled in Vegas? Great question. Plus, Bracketology has BYU three spots out, but how will a game at Gonzaga change that? This is BYU Sports Nation. This segment of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Visible Supply Chain Management. BYU Football Top 100 Plays. On demand on the BYU TV app, we 
recount the greatest plays in Cougar football history. Fun conversation with Dax Milne a minute ago where that man, Harvey Unga, told him midseason, hey, have you thought about it? No, not really. Yeah, and Harvey, a guy that, uh, you know, had a couple post him in the NFL, if you will. So he knows. Yeah, how about that? Your running backs coach comes up and says, hey, you know, I know you're not, you're, so you're not thinking about it. Well, I've got a bunch of scouts calling me. So maybe you should think I about think it. I should think about it. And Dax is now leaving for Irvine, California today to go train to get ready for L- the like, NFL. Literally did this interview, and now he's leaving <laughs> <laughs> to go to Irvine. So we'll, we'll talk with Dax again, that is for sure. Uh, Jeff Goodman just tweeted, BYU at Gonzaga on Thursday, source told Stadium. So a lot more reports coming out okay. about this. So uh, just waiting for the official announcement at this point. So if it's the number one team in America, um, do you think the worldwide leader might be interested in picking that game up, Jerem? Well, that is the uh, primary tier one uh, TV <laughs> provider for the WCC. And, hmm. yeah, Espen likes them some Gonzaga. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see about those details later. To uh, be it'll revealed. be on ESPN or ESPN. <laughs> yeah, you, it has to be, right? He's Jerem Jordan. I'm Spencer Linton. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. It's time to whip it. The Cougar Whip Around presented by Visible Supply Chain Management. Tackling America's most challenging shipping problems. Today's third out in ESPN's latest Bracketology by Joe Lenardi this morning. Is it too early to be on the anxious bubble watch? Yes, because when the next Bracketology comes out following a BYU game at Gonzaga, regardless of what happens, BYU's metrics might be so good that they are the last team in. It, it can make that much of a difference depending on how BYU plays and how it affects the numbers. Yeah, BYU loses big, Joey's not going to suddenly launch BYU in, so it does matter how BYU plays at Gonzaga. The net might increase, but Joe not, might not put him in. I think it's always fine to be anxious about Bob Watch. I, I'm like, literally, during the summer, like when BYU was way out, it's like, okay, the mountain is that much higher to climb for BYU, so let's go. Yeah, it's, it's good to be, to feel the urgency, right? Yeah. I'm not anxious about anything. <laughs> the only thing I'm anxious about is when people are anxious around me. Then I'm like, why are you making what? me anxious? I'm feeling anxiety. Come on. Stop it. Doesn't help anybody. The entirety of West Coast Conference men's basketball, this is wild, has only played two of the seven scheduled games up to this point of the season, and now five additional games this week already postponed. So we're two for 12, Jerem. Well, hey, added one. Not good. Let's go. Should the West Coast Conference, and they discussed this, have bubbled in Las Vegas? Well, is that more expensive? Uh, because it certainly would have helped in playing, but there there is a financial situation to this. We forget, BYU has the benefit of a football program that helps pay for a lot of things. All these schools don't, except for San Diego, which has FCS. You wouldn't think it's making that much dough. Gonzaga has a football team, if you will, with the men's basketball team and, and that <laughs> revenue from the NCAA tournaments and Sweet 16 units and da da da. I don't I don't know. Like yes, competitively, but probably no financially. It would be really hard to convince all of the West Coast Conference schools to go to Las Vegas. Would they make an exception for the California schools? Now we're talking. Maybe where it's like, hey, Cal- ask we- college kids to want to go to Vegas. I don't know, man. Well, and then give them. So the they can't outline. really do anything. We're, we're, we're looking at programs that obviously want to be playing, but they can't, and they're in online courses anyway, so they could go to school online from wherever they are in the country. Yeah. It's just the cost of the hotel. And- for that long. Well, and how long would it be? Could you play like three games a week for like a month? Maybe the Orleans could hook it up, Jerem, you know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> PTSD thinking about that. Okay, Boise State President Marlene Trump spoke at a press conference yesterday introducing the new athletic director, Jeremiah Dickey. Not Trump, Trump. Trump. In it, she was asked about the school's relationship with the Mountain West and potential pursuits outside it. She said, quote, we will always look for those opportunities. Then okay. she said... Right now, we're very proud members of the Mountain West. Do you see Boise State in the Mountain West in two years? Well, with the attitude of, hey, it's great, but uh, we're perusing for something better, then I don't know that I anticipate Boise State will be in the Mountain West Conference in two years. The way things have gone with how outspoken Brian Harson was. and Be gone. I, I know that this statement kind of smoothed some things over. But they're still clearly looking. I thought it opened the door. They're dude. clearly we looking. Always look for those opportunities. That's not smoothing what, over. That's what opening it? up. But we're very proud members of the Mountain West. No, that's no, that's saying. a Brian Logan backpedal. <laughs> it's. I don't expect them to be in the Mountain West in two years. But everything is trending towards Boise State doing something else. But where are they going? The because American? when you're in, geographically, doesn't fit at all. When, when maybe football only. 
Being in the West is an issue for conferences. We don't talk about this much. Geographically, where are you going to go? They're going to go to the Big West? They even have football? They don't have the FBS football. Where are you going to go? Humor me. It's the Mountain West or nothing. Humor or me. independent. For a moment. Okay, yeah. So independence is there. If and when all of these conference realignments happen, we all think that they're going to happen at some point. I don't, between... ne- I don't necessarily think it. Okay, happens. so maybe I, you're like, not feeling that way anymore. Everyone assumes. It's like, well, someone has to move. Who's going to move? So if something happens and there is shifting, could a new group of five conference be born? Do the whack part two. Yeah, but with BYU and Boise State and the best of the rest. I don't know that BYU would jump into that initially. It's interesting, yeah. for sure. Okay, be, uh, nope. You're on this one. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to set you up this because you're the voice of BYU men's volleyball. The Cougars begin the, the season. You're the voice of women's volleyball. Come on. <laughs> True. But we're not talking you're about women's volleyball right now. You're the body it's, of it. BYU men's volleyball begins the season as number one in the polls. Yeah, baby. Not a shocker based on what they were doing last season. They're bringing everybody back. Jeremy, will the Cougars finish the season number one? That's the hope, man. Uh, Hawaii's number two. I, they had some epic battles, right, in Hawaii. BYU was the best team in the country when the season ended. Hawaii brings back basically everybody as well. So that'd be a fun battle probably at Ohio State is where it is. Uh, May 8th. Let's go. Yes, Jaron, they will finish number one. It is a national championship campaign for BYU men's volleyball in 2021. The athletic department has been so good about navigating all of these COVID issues. They've worked around to allow players as much practice time as possible. BYU has done an incredible job and no different with men's volleyball. They're going to be the number one team to start. They're going to win national championship. They might be be number one wire to wire. Let's go. There's there's a chance. Yes. We'll see. We're still waiting for the schedule. Okay. And uh, Jennifer, uh, or excuse me, Sarah Hampson uh, involved in this. Hampson set one, two, and three in the BYU women's. Hoops all-time block records with Sarah yes. passing her sister Jen last night. Block number 341. 341? <laughs> Holy shnikes. Mother to, Mother Teresa, that's what we're going to call her now. Her uh, Mother is Teresa. The, is the, just Mother Teresa. <laughs> and her Mother Teresa. Top block getter with 494. What is the Hampson Trio rank in your all-time Cougar sports family? Oh, top three for sure. Because I'm thinking about the Haas family. Yep. Between Marty and Tyler and TJ. That's Marty. a pretty fantastic trio right there. I did all right. The Hampsons... Based on what Jen did as a multiple sport first team All American, that's hard to replicate. Oh, she's the greatest female athlete in the world. It's incredible. So, her being part of that already amazing Hampson lineage makes them. They're, they're probably top two, Jerem. Like who? Who else is there besides the Haas and the Hampson? Sanders, pretty good. Okay, Sanders have been amazing. Right, Brandon player Taylor, of the year. Kafusis. Reynolds, Domans, Bellinis, Collies. Yeah. No, Hampsons are right up there, dude. Oh, yeah. man. They're fantastic. Okay, coming up, the top five Zach Wilson moments at BYU. You're not going to worry. Plus, what should BYU football do with that vacant coaching spot? This is BYU Sports Nation. Mother Teresa, you like it. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU TV app is the place to watch recent and some old BYU sports games. Get your VOD fix of Eddie Stinnett throwing a pass to Steve Young that he barely catches for a touchdown to beat Missouri. He in might score! They do score! By the way, if you want... Thanks, Jay Monson. Ask a question! Answer it! Uh, you can go to the BYU TV app to watch those kind of games. Uh, and by the way, if you missed it, we've done a couple uh, shows called Reviewables. So we take a look at uh, Deep Dive like a season. We did the 83 Reviewables. That's on the BYU TV app as well. Just type in 1983. should be able to have it uh, there. But, uh, yeah, fun look at that uh, season. We had Steve Young on the show. Fun conversation. I still stand by what I said. I think that is the best team that BYU football has ever put together. I think it's 2021's team. <laughs> oh Oh, snap. Seven power fives. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live in Studio B with the announcement of Aaron Roderick as the new BYU football offensive coordinator and Fessy Satake as the new pass game coordinator. The rest of the offensive staff remains intact. Eric Mateo still there. Steve Clark, tight ends coach, still there. There's an opening on the staff with Jeff Grimes leaving for Baylor. So, Jerem, what should Kalani Satake do with that open position? Where should that position be filled? Okay, in the release, it basically said the offensive staff is staying. So let's walk through that. Aaron Roderick, OC, QB coach, uh, running game coordinator as well. 
um, but not listed. Fess Sitake, pass game coordinator, receivers coach. Steve Clark, tight ends coach. Eric Mateos, offensive line coach. So those are the guys. You have those four. Now, and you, Steve Clark could take on some more responsibilities with Fessy and Aaron, too. Like, he could. If they asked him to do more, yeah, he's sure. capable of he's doing He's a former that. OC yeah. um, himself at, uh, what, Southern Utah, I think. So, yeah. And, and then defensively, you have uh, kept everybody at the moment. It's still picking season uh, for the coaching berries, if you will. Uh, <laughs> And you have Elias Tuiaki as the D.C. and D-line coach. You have uh, Ed Lamb at linebackers. You have Gennaro Guilford at corners. You have Preston Hadley at safeties. Um, did I miss anybody there? No, and then Kalani overseeing and it Kalani all. Kalani overseeing. So you, you have one more. I say you put it on defense, and I say you make it Kevin Clune. Who's Kevin Clune? Kevin Clune was a guy that was a volunteer on the defensive staff this year. For, what if I told you that he was a former D.C. at Utah State and Oregon State, and last year in 2019 was the linebackers coach at Memphis? What if I told you the BYU used his genius to beat three AAC teams yes. named Navy, Houston, and UCF? What if I told you that BYU basically revealed that he's on the staff publicly for one of the first times in the bowl photos leading up to and put a headset on him in the bowl game? So BYU is uh, embracing Kevin Clune's role on the staff, and I say just add him. To yeah, staff. it's interesting. A former be- DC, add him. Because I saw this guy, I'm like, who, who's this new guy on the sideline? <clears throat> Excuse me. I, Not a I, GA. I know it's everyone. I know everybody, but I don't recognize that face. Yeah. So I'm in the stadium. I'm looking at the sides like, who is this guy? Now you know. It's Kevin Klum. It's Kevin Klum. So I, I think that would be a good addition. I know people have talked about, hey, for, add Frank Miley from Utah State. There, there are a lot of the add Justin Enna or something, right, uh, who has been at Utah State. We'll, we'll see who, who BYU adds, but they do have an assistant coach position to add. I think you added on defense. Yeah, I was going to say, which side of the ball do you want to see the coach? Yeah, and I wouldn't be opposed to adding somebody on offense. Um, I just feel like BYU has has, uh, the guys. I I think they're set up. I think BYU defense does too. It just feels like an additional awesome guy. And if you can add a guy that's been in the AAC and been a DC in the uh, Pac-12 and at Utah State, that's a lot of great experience. Let's go. Kevin Clune, Frank Miley. I don't know that there is – Really, anybody else? I mean, you could look at the Virginia guys, but are those guys going to leave their positions with Bronco Mendenhall and come back to BYU? Guy like I'm guessing they get paid more than they would here. You know, there. Kelly Papinga. Yeah. Um, on the offensive side, Garrett Two J, Jason Beck have at times been outspoken about their love for BYU, and you know, yeah, sure, wouldn't be surprised to see those guys end up somewhere in Provo at some point. Yeah, they want to elevate right in yeah. the, in the biz and be coordinators probably at some point. Um, and right now, there's not a coordinator spot open here. So we'll see. Um, it, was, it was interesting, too, that uh, we talked about earlier how quickly BYU pulled the trigger on Aaron. That's how obvious that choice was. And BYU c- had to have known for a, a while now. I don't know what that you would means. Think at least a f- week at or two. At least maybe? a few days, at least. I mean, it could have been a couple weeks. Who knows? Because once – and everything was expedited uh, – or, sorry, delayed this year. Because normally these are happening, like, second week of December. But here we are in the first week of January. So – Hopefully, BYU can keep as many guys as possible, although it is good when guys get plucked because it means they're valued and, and go elsewhere. So I see the argument for the continuity of a staff, but yep. I'll see the argument for moving on and getting uh, good and, and, and better guys, which is good. So I always try and think well, about... And, and maybe not better, sorry, just different. Because people often ask me, okay, well, so all these guys come back, what does it mean? And I try and quantify what it means by... How much better do I feel about this team in terms of how many more games will they win or lose based on which right. coaches they lose? Yes. Keeping everybody on the staff makes me feel like BYU has a really good shot to win eight games of the 12 in the regular season next year. I'd love eight against seven power fives and boys stay. I think that'd be a really, really I mean, good we season, all, all hope, things considered. We all hope that BYU wins every game. Sure. And they have shown that they are capable of beating anybody in front of them on any given week. Right. And besides 2020 – capable of losing to group of fives. BYU got over that, or so we think, but we'll see. BYU is going to go back to not having a first-team All-American yeah. left tackle and a first-round quarterback, right? Um, I, still good team, and what is good, it's quantified to me by what you said. Eight. If you win eight out of 12 regular season games, to me, you're a good team. Have a shot you at nine in the bowl seven, game? and you're like two games above 500. I, I think you have to get to eight to be a good team. In see, the coaching staff sticking around, to me, makes me feel like this team is capable of winning one to two more games based on the continuity yes. and who they are and the relationships. I like it, and it sets up favorably in terms of being at home initially, yeah. which has always been hard. Okay, coming up, rise and shout-out to a top team.
plus the top five Zach Wilson plays in his unforgettable BYU career. You're not going to miss this. Stay with us on BYU Sports Nation. Only five? This segment of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Delta Airlines. Keep climbing. BYU Sports Nation's Rise and Shoutout is presented by Mountain America Credit Union, guiding you forward. BYU Sports Nation, always available on demand via the BYU TV and BYU radio apps. How fun was the football season? Moy, go download the podcast. Just Google BYU Sports Nation podcast. Subscribe, review, read. More Isaac Rex, please. Love watching those highlights. Oh, come man. back from break. He had a... Uh, he had a uh, Quorum of touchdowns. Twelve touchdowns. Yeah. That is unbelievable. A, a, a dozen. I was hoping it would be a baker's dozen because that's like the funnest phrase to say ever. Hey, well, maybe One I'll get for it next me. year. Let's uh, take that baker's dozen down to five for Top 5 Tuesday. Presented by Delta Airlines. Keep climbing. We're focusing on the top five Zach Wilson plays at BYU, Jerem. Number five, 2018, Northern Illinois. You want to forget this game because BYU lost. Don't forget this play. This is one of the greatest plays we've forgotten about. Zach Wilson hurdles a fool, stiff arms him in the air as a freshman, and then stares him down. Get some! (laughs) Oh, my gosh. With his offhand, by the way. Great look here. (laughs) I love this play. To get a first down. Ugh. We should have put it in top 100. I don't know because they didn't win that game. <laughs> Seven lost. to six. Great play. It is a great play. Number four. Speaking of Zach running, how about this 16-yard rush against oh, USC to take a 27-24 lead with just over five minutes to play in the game. Lavelle Edwards Stadium was rocking in this moment. Oh, man, what a fun game, right? Winning an OT, the go-ahead. USC answers with, uh, with a tying field goal from, like, 52 or whatever. But, oh, man, what a great day. Afternoon game. Sky Cam. <laughs> ABC. I was beautiful. Oh, was back when we had lots of fans and stuff. Yeah. That was, that was cool. And BYU used to play Power 5 teams. It was crazy. Okay, number three, Zach Wilson shovel pass to Mason Wake for an eight-yard touchdown against Houston to take the lead. Whoop! <laughs> Chiefs! This was uh, Patrick Mahomes commented on a tweet of this play. Mason Wake then revealed, rest in heaven, Mom. Pretty cool play, man. Pretty cool play. Yes, and just look how subtle the pass is. Whoop! It, okay, it, Mason Wake told me that Zach Wilson in practice told him he was going to point at him as he threw it. But in the moment, didn't. No, and so Mason said, I, I was just like, Aah! he said it kind of, he told us, it kind of surprised him. I really hope him. he made that noise. Aah! It kind of surprised him when the ball actually was thrown. Like, okay, here we go. And he kind of side, st- side hurdles a guy. I thought it was a pretty good move. Mason Wake hurdling people? That's weird. Crazy. Uh, back half of the season, Mason Wake just like went away. Uh, uh, more Mason Wake. Let's go. Number two. Who can forget this? Zach Wilson's final touchdown uh, pass of his career to Neil Pau. Zing! What a throw, dude. <laughs> he made like a million dollars on that I throw, t- probably. So like, I think I tweeted the night. Um, that throw right there basically guaranteed Zach a top 10 pick in the NFL draft. One of like 29 throws that are just <laughs> dope. Like, Neil Pau doesn't have to move. Look, Neil's moving. He's just like, don't, don't look. Don't look. Got it. And the top play from Zach Wilson in his career. This is a contextual play at Tennessee, like 19 seconds left, 64 yards to Micah Simon. 100,000 fans. Oh. oh, man. And Tennessee ended up top 30 ESPN FPI, top 35. So that, that, was a, that was an amazing play. I mean, it's not his greatest throw, but it's like the, what it meant. Still a pretty good throw. It was, it was amazing. Woo! So. Well done. Those are your top five Zach Wilson plays in his BYU oh. football career. Next week, let's do throws. Just throws. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Our question of the day. Back to BYU basketball. How do you feel about BYU at Gonzaga on Thursday? You okay with expediting that game in the schedule? Our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. Ben Peterson says on Twitter, and uh, that tweet just disappeared in my script. So let's go with Pete Andrews on Twitter. It's uh, 
a great time. BYU is coming off some of their best basketball against Utah and San Diego State. Oh, but, that like four months ago? It's been la- the layoff. So how much feels, rust will BYU forever. have against Gonzaga? Feels forever ago. Today's Rise and Shoutouts presented by Mountain America Credit Union guiding you forward. Men's volleyball, number one. Let's go, baby. Mine goes to Mark Pope and BYU basketball. Legitimate willingness to play whoever, wherever, whenever. Yeah, yeah, we've heard that before, right? What was that? Was there a headband? headband? Is there a headband or something? Go, man. Our thanks to today's guest, Dax Mill. Guard Dennis Petter. For Jerem Jordan, I am Spencer Linton. Shout out to Scott Colley. We'll see you tonight on the BYU TV app for a loaded edition of BYU Basketball with Mark Pope. Go Cougs!